In this video, we're going to take a look at creating basic structures. A basic structure can be any non-moving object such as a house or even a tent. We're going to use polygons to create this structure and we're going to build a building. We'll start by creating a primitive cube. I'll choose Create, Polygon Primitives, Cube, and we just get our default cube in the center of our world. I'm going to switch over to my channel box here so I can see my values. And the first thing that I want to do is move the center pivot of my object down to the base of the cube. I'll hit W and I can see where my manipulator's at. That's also representing where my pivot point is. And we'll choose Insert on the keyboard to enter pivot point mode. And I'll grab Snap to Point and just drag it down in the Y to snap to one of the bottom vertices of the cube. I'll press insert again to back out of pivot point mode. And I'll also turn snap to point off and now use snap to grid. I won't choose that from up at the top menu this time. Instead, I'll press X for the hotkey for snap to grid and then just lift that cube up so that it's now sitting on top of the grid plane. Next, I'm gonna scale my cube out and we want it to, again, be a building of some kind, just a very low quality building. So we need to give it some scale. And we'll do five in the X, 10 in the Y to give it some height, and five to give it some depth there in the Z. I'll switch over to shaded mode so that I can see it a little bit better. And we've got our start to our building here. Now I wanna add extra divisions to this cube so that I can go back and start to pull out windows and make some levels and doors. We'll scroll down and I'm gonna to go to my construction history node, which is this polycube node right here. We'll click on that, scroll down, and I'll alter my subdivision width and height, as well as the depth. We're gonna change those values so that they match the scale that I have already applied to the cube. Doing this will ensure that I get all squares. And so now I have a nice even flowing surface. We're gonna establish the bottom floor of our building by deleting the last two edge loops. I'll choose Edge from my component marking menu and I'll double click on the row and then Shift and double click to select the second row. And now I'll delete those by choosing Edit Mesh Delete Edge Vertex. And now that gets rid of all of that extra geometry there. And now I actually have what appears to be kind of a taller level to the front of our building or to the base of our building. Now we can also choose these icons from the Polygons shelf. So if we're familiar with these or we want to get familiar with these, we can just kind of hover over them and see what tool is actually there and then we can just bypass using our menus up at the top there and just click it directly from the shelf. Next, we want to add some windows to our building. I'm gonna switch and go over to just a side view here, and I'm gonna press five to go into shaded mode, and right click and change my component selection to face. And now I want to select every other face that is inside my building here. When I select this, I'm gonna draw a marquee selection, just like that, and let go. And the reason for doing this is so that I select not only the face on this side that I can see, but also the face on the other side of the model. I'll switch back to my side view and continue. So I'll draw a marquee to there, and we'll just keep going down, and just grabbing every other square there for our window. I'll switch to our front view, and we'll do the same thing. With those faces selected, we can now do an extrusion and pull that geometry inward. And we'll kind of look at a quarter view here, and I'll go up to my shelf and choose my extrude tool. And with the extrude tool, I'll grab in the Z direction and push in. And this will push all of those faces that I had selected, push them in as part of my extrude. And we'll click off to deselect. Next, I wanna add just a little bit of detail here. 
and put some type of concrete extrusion around that top level of my building. So just right around here, we want to insert some type of a kind of like a concrete extrusion that might be decorating a building. To do this, I'm going to use the insert edge loop tool. I'll choose edit mesh and then grab insert edge loop and I'll click and then I can relocate that loop uh, wherever I want between the edges that I've selected there. And we're just going to kind of eyeball it here. We'll just approximate the thickness of our extrusion that we're about to put in there. We'll just drop that in. And then I'll switch to select faces and we'll double click to grab the entire row. And then I'll grab the extrude tool and we'll pull this out instead of pushing it in. Now as I pull it out here, we can start to see that things don't look quite right. Pulling it out in the Z direction is not pulling the extrusion out uniformly. Instead, it's actually basing it off of the geometry that we currently have as far as their overall lengths are concerned. So at every corner, we're having it pull just a little less. It's kind of averaging out between these two faces. So instead of pulling it out in the Z, let's undo. We'll use our floating menu here and click on thickness and we'll pull the thickness out. And you can see I've kind of overdone it here, but you can see when I pull that out, it's nice and uniform. It's the exact results that we're looking for. So I'll let go of that. We don't want it to be that thick. I'll click on the value itself and I'll just type in 0.1 and that'll work for us. Next, I want to add a door to the front of our building. I'm going to start by merging some of these vertices together. And I'll select those two there. Choose Edit Mesh. And I'll choose Merge. And that's going to take the average of both of those vertices, the average distance, and merge them together into the center. And that being the center of my selection. So because I just had those two vertices together, they're going to kind of come together in the middle. We'll do the same thing for the bottom to make this even. And now I'll just hit G on the keyboard just to repeat my last command. Now as I'm going here, I can see that the geometry on the bottom of the building, we end up with a triangle there. All of that geometry there for the bottom of the building really isn't needed. We'll probably end up putting this building on top of some other concrete slab. So there's no reason to have a floor directly here at this point. So I'm going to select these faces. And we can kind of make this a little quicker by just selecting a bunch of faces, a little bit more than what we need. And then just deselect the top there. That'll just leave all of those bottom faces. And then I can just press delete on the keyboard. I had an extra vert in there. Let's try that again. That prevented it from being deleted. We'll select those faces and then hit delete uh, to remove those. Now I'll select faces. We'll grab those two there. And we're going to place our door somewhat in the middle of this area, but I'll select both of those large faces, choose extrude, and we'll uniformly scale those in. And then we'll also shape them up. We kind of want to get them down to be a decent sized door. Pull that in a little bit. And then we can translate this down as well. It's probably still a little large. Let's scale that a little further. Something about that size. Now this will result in a couple of extra faces down there at the bottom. We could go ahead and either leave them as part of some kind of threshold or step up into our building maybe add a little stair there, or we could go ahead and delete those faces and then just merge our geometry down or pull the rest of our geometry down and get rid of any overlapping geometry. I think we'll just go ahead and leave it there and we will extrude again and pull that in just to give us some sort of little extra threshold around the door area. And we'll zoom out and kind of take a look here. It still looks a little plain. Let's add a little bit more detail to the top and give it kind of a nice looking roof to finish it off. And to start this, we'll select all of the faces to the top of the building. So I'll switch to face. Again, I'm going to grab a little bit more than what I need and then just deselect. 
and we'll choose extrude. We'll lift this up a bit. I'll hit G to repeat my last command, which is extrude again. I'll go to scale and we'll scale that in, creating kind of a little ledge there for our roof. Hit G and pull that down. Now that creates kind of the top for the roof and the ledge of the roof, but we can extend this out a little further too. Again, a little more detail. I'll double click that row and we'll extrude this out. Same problem as before. If we just try to extrude in the Z, our corners give us trouble. So we'll undo and just use that thickness. We'll pull that out to point two. That looks pretty good. And I think that will work. Okay, just to clean this up before we can say we're done, we want to get rid of all of our history here. We do not need it anymore. I'll choose Edit, Delete by Type, History, and then I'll also freeze my transforms. Those transforms aren't needed either. We'll go to Modify, Freeze Transforms. Let's rename it to Building. We'll hit Enter, and then we're good to go.